Now to Mississippi, where cleanup is underway after a tornado killed at least 26 people and injured dozens more over the weekend. The town of Rolling Fork took the brunt of the damage. The twister destroyed homes and businesses. The White House says FEMA and the Homeland Security Department are working to ensure residents have what they need. President Biden approved an expedited major disaster declaration for Mississippi early Sunday morning and ordered federal funding be made available to support emergency response efforts in the areas affected by the severe storms. For more on this, here's CBS News correspondent Omar Villafranco. The deadly storms dropped golf ball size hail and brought tornadoes that left a path of destruction from Mississippi to Georgia. This church was demolished, but the pastor says their spirit isn't broken. God's got a purpose, God's got a plan. One person was killed in Alabama. The storm pounded the town of Florence, toppling trees and damaging houses. While in Mississippi, residents have been cleaning up for four days after a powerful EF4 tornado tore through Rolling Fork Friday night. Tracy Harding and seven other people took cover in her restaurant's cooler seconds before the tornado struck. It was chaos. Everything was flattened and you just hear screaming of this one's name and that one's name and, and these are people you know and you know they were home and you don't know where they are. The weekend tornado was the most powerful in Mississippi in three years. It left a 59 mile long path of destruction through multiple counties and was on the ground for over an hour. You had uh, Miss Lynn's house. 32 year old Jeremy Grayson still remembers where his neighbors lived, even though most of the homes here were obliterated. You grew up here. Yeah, at the hospital to here. His home is now just a pile of rubble. Grayson mentioned with a poverty rate in this county high, nearly three times the national average, he fears that a neglected corner of the country will be forgotten. Are you worried that the state and other people are going to forget about you here and you're not going to be able to rebuild? Yeah, that's why we want you guys out here. That's why we're out here. And uh, Omar Villafranca joins me now from Rolling Fork with more. Omar, why was this tornado so destructive? It's hard for me to gauge between them, but this one seemed particularly so. Well, John, this one was an EF4, so we're talking winds up to 170 miles per hour, and meteorologists tell us that EF4s are, are really kind of rare. They don't happen that often. When you have that kind of power in a storm, uh, you're seeing what it can do behind me. Some of these trees over here don't even have bark. They don't have any other limbs. It's just a stump in the middle. Uh, Brick walls were smashed down, roofs were thrown, cars were thrown around like they were toys. And what makes this even more terrifying, talking to residents, forget the fact that it came at night, 8.30 at night under the cover of darkness. People got alerts on their phones, but the sirens here did not go off. Um, and the county is telling us that the tornado formed so fast they didn't have time to sound them, but people were getting alerts on their phones. Some people said they had a few seconds. Other people say they had maybe a minute, minute and a half to try to get in, get somewhere and seek shelter. And as you mentioned in your piece, Omar, the tornado hit a particularly impo impoverished part of Mississippi. Um, how uh, how is the state and local government? I we're seeing behind you the 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 cleanup effort. How is the state and local government? helping out, and how much more difficult is that in this community? Well, and, and let me tell you, they're just starting to help out. These folks that you see behind me, they're not with any state entity. They're not with any government entity. There's some farmers who live down the road, and they have the equipment to do their work. Well, they brought it over here to help members of their community here. Folks down here don't wait for the federal government or even the state government to do anything. So the gas that they're pumping through that vehicle right there to move this person's uh, belongings to the front, they're doing that because they're saying, hey, that's my neighbor over there. They need my help. Now, the federal funds, when they come down, uh, will open up to rebuild infrastructure will be big. Rebuilding homes and small businesses, John. But that's going to take time, months, maybe even years. And the one thing that these people do not have is time. The gentleman who lives behind me doesn't have a house to go home to. He's got to go stay at, his, uh, at some of his uh, family's house. Time is one thing they don't have, and unfortunately in this situation, as we mentioned, money as well. Right. No cushion. Omar Villafranca in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Thanks so much for being out there, Omar.